All right, let's do this. I have been the executive director of Cancer Support Community for the past 10 years. People come to CSC when they've been diagnosed with cancer to improve their quality of life. I am frequently asked, is it working there depressing? I tell you that while it can be sad, it is not depressing. In fact, this important work has changed my life. As I work with people through their cancer journey, I have been given the gift to participate and be present as people negotiate great times of grief and despair. Great despair. Times when people have been hit with horrible news over and over, and yet I have witnessed an amazing resilience of the human spirit. People prevail. Let me tell you about three people touched by cancer. David is a vibrant 50-year-old healthy man who hears the diagnosis that he has late-stage esophageal cancer. His world goes dark. He feels alone and lost in his new world of medicine and decreasing vitality. Lily is a first grade girl and just found out she has a recurring brain tumor. I sit and listen to her mom's tears as she shares the horrific news. What will she do? I can only try to imagine the terror she feels to accept that her daughter's life is in danger. Annie is a young mom with metastatic cancer. I go to her bedside as she absorbs the unthinkable prognosis that there is no more treatment available to her. She will die of her cancer and leave her young son without a mom. Helpless and afraid, she feels the fight is over. Resilience is the capacity and willingness to fly in the face of despair. It is the quality that allows people to be knocked down by life and come back stronger than ever. What is it that makes people get back up over and over when faced with disease, trauma, and loss? Psychologists have identified factors that make someone resilient. An ability to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Choosing to stay in and be present to what is happening with all the pain, sorrow, and suffering. An acceptance that you can manage the tears and heartache you feel today. Knowing you won't fall apart. You can do this no matter the outcome. One characteristic I often see in people is an ability to find hope in the middle of despair. And by hope, I mean an openness to possibility, an acceptance of risk, and a determination to work things out, a willingness to let go of the outcome and move forward anyways. Hope can float every day and must continue changing to adapt to the situation. At the time of diagnosis, we hope for a cure. During treatment, we hope to preserve our physical health. And at time of death, hope floats again as we hope for a peaceful death with time to share compassion with those we love. While people assume that spending time with those who are struggling is depressing, it is actually uplifting. While I, while I have certainly had the opportunity to practice resilience in my own life, I am now given the gift of perspective every day. Sometimes the issues in our life seem big, but they are truly smaller than we think. Life is not about how fast you run or how high you climb, it's how well you bounce. And they bounced. David sat present with his fear and then decided to move through and play the cards he was dealt. He partnered with his doctors, stayed compliant with his treatment plan, and he beat his cancer. Lily entered high school and bravely stood in front of her peers to tell her story. She told the group about the many surgeries and treatments she had, she talked about how hard it was to keep up with her schoolwork. A gem came through as she said, you never know how strong you are until being strong is your only choice. And Annie, from her bedside, she looked up at me and said, Becky, I don't know how to not fight. I tell her the fight has simply changed. She must now fight to leave memories for her son, to record her voice in the playback book so her loving voice can last for her child for all time. We know that death is certain, the time of death is uncertain, so now what? We show up and live each day fully. People who have faced their own mortality gain a refreshing view of life. They get rid of a career that does not work, dump an unhealthy relationship, join an art class. They embrace what makes their life precious. These are the lessons and joys I am surrounded by. Day after day, I am reminded by our participants of the beauty of each day. The deep color in the blue sky and the blue bird. The vibrant shimmer of light on the freshly fallen snow. 
the glorious sound of musical chimes hanging in our garden of hope. I am reminded that life is fragile. Tomorrow, the people I love so dearly may be gone. I have learned to show up to visit my friends and family when they ask. I am aware of how the busy world can keep me from the people who mean the most. I always give my husband a kiss before we part ways each day. I say yes, I choose today. When my son says, Mom, I need you to come to Okinawa because I miss you, I get a plane ticket. I book the trip when my sister wants to reconnect during a yoga retreat. I get in the car when a dear friend needs to be driven to her dying mother's bedside. Now, no matter the time of day. You see, when you look at the face of cancer every day, it is easy to keep things in perspective. It is easy to decide what is an emergency and what is not. So I encourage my staff to leave early to see their children perform at school, take the day off to tend to their family when they are needed. I show up, hold the space, and be present. At the end of the day, that is really what matters. We worry about what to say, but our presence is what's important. I can show up and put my arms around people when they hurt. It can be that simple. When I can be present with pain and compassion, well then, I can be fully present to love and joy. Every day I'm reminded that I am fully alive. Hope and resilience come together and allow people to rise out of despair. And sometimes you have to plant seeds in the snow and hope that spring will come. The power of resilience. <laughs>